Hello friends, this is Sarah, the maker behind Flourishing Fibers. Today, we are embroidering the Busy Bees paper embroidery pattern on a cute heart-shaped card. This pattern is very beginner. The texture of the bees and the dimensions of the flower really make this project stand out, but don't let those details intimidate you. All the stitches used for this pattern are fun and easy. You can easily access the Busy Bees pattern as well as the wide range of tools and supplies on my website, flourishingfibers.com. As a token of my appreciation for your support, I also provide free patterns exclusively for my newsletter subscribers. All the necessary links are in the video description. I encourage you to explore these resources and enhance your crafting journey. Let's get started on Busy Bees. This pattern has a few sections that should be stitched and in a particular order to avoid any thread snagging or frustrations. First are the leaves. We need to make sure that the first step is to stitch the center stem with backstitch. Then we move on to the fly stitch. Those would be the lines inside the leaf. Then we can stitch the outline of the leaves and stem stitch. The second element is the bees. For these cuties, we need to stitch the wings first, then move on to the body. For the body, we want to start the turkey work from the bottom of the bee and work our way up. We will stitch the two lines in black and then we can stitch the head of the bee since we'll have the correct color threaded. Finally, the last element is the flowers. Those should be stitched starting from the outer circle and working our way to the center circle. I'll get into more details why these steps are important when we get to those sections. Okay, let's move on. The leaves need their center stem stitched and backstitched. And yes, the stem is done and backstitched all the way until it reaches the flower stem. Once done, we can start the fly stitches. These are really easy to achieve. Pass your needle below a back stitch and that's it. You need to do this step first to avoid snagging any surrounding stitches when you're going below the back stitch, which makes this part of the project more enjoyable. When you are done with the back stitches and fly stitches, move on to the outline of the leaves. This is done using stem stitch. I like to start each leaf at the top and work my way down. The pattern instructions include a diagram showing the direction of the stem stitches. The goal here is to create a smooth curve.
After the leaves, I'm moving on to complete the stem of the flowers. Again, those are done in stem stitch. We are moving on to the little beast. Let's go ahead and stitch the little trails. This is done using running stitch, very easy. Just make sure you use two strands of thread for this part. Okay, now onto the actual bees. As I mentioned earlier, we first need to stitch the wings. These are done in a detached chain stitch, AKA Lazy Daisy stitch. First, take your awl and slowly rotate it in an angle to slightly enlarge the hole. We will be making several passes through this, so this will help with the tension. You go up and back down the same hole and leave a loop behind. Come up the top hole, go through the loop, and then back to the same hole. Pull the thread to close up the loop until you get to the desired shape. Do the same for all the wings. All right, we are moving on to the turkey stitch. We use this technique for both the bees and the flowers, but before I get into the actual stitching of those elements, I want to review the technique itself. Turkey stitch is a technique that can add a lot of texture. Loops are created and then trimmed to create a carpet-like texture. To create a loop, you come up one of the holes and back down the next, leaving a U-shaped loop. Then you go back down the original hole and back down again in the second to secure the loop. Individual loops can be used to create petal shapes like for our flower. You can also create a line of loops as shown, then cut and trim the loops to create a rug texture. You can brush the thread with an old toothbrush. Separating the fibers helps create a fuzzier look which is what we want for the bees. Now that we are moving on to the actual project, you can better understand what I'm doing. I know some of the stitches for the bees are small and my fingers block a lot of what I'm doing, but I hope that after reviewing the technique, you get the idea. When you stitch the back line of the bees, start at the bottom and work your way up. This way, when you get to the top, you can go ahead and stitch the French knot that makes up the head since it's also in black thread.
Okay, the flowers are a little simpler because the stitches aren't so small. The loops here are individual and do not get trimmed. I recommend stitching from the outer circle and working your way in. When you complete the last round of petals, the center is a French knot using 12 strands of thread and two turns. We want to make the center really chunky. We move on to the final element of the design, which is the French knots around the card. This uses six strands and only one turn around the needle. I added tension when creating these because I want them to be as round as possible, but feel free to experiment. And with that, we have covered all the steps for this pattern. I love how cheerful spring inspired it all feels. It's a beautiful design to enjoy year round, but it could also be a perfect Mother's Day card or a gift. Thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed following along. One last reminder, all the links are in the video description. If you enjoyed this tutorial or simply want to support me, please subscribe to my channel. All the support is greatly appreciated. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you next time. Keep on stitching. Bye.